Hello, this is John Wettenkamp with the National Weather Service Office in La Crosse, Wisconsin, and here is your updated spring hydrologic outlook. The overall flood risk for this spring has been reduced significantly, especially for the potential for moderate and major flooding. The flood risk is now above normal on the Mississippi River versus well above normal. So we're seeing the potential for many sites to go into minor flooding, but we can't rule out some moderate flooding as well at a few locations. The Mississippi tributaries, now that much of the snow has melted across the local area, the threat in those locations are near to above normal, but that is variable. Minor flooding remains likely on the Mississippi River, but again, the probability, the overall probability for flooding on the tributaries has uh, reduced significantly and the, and the probability for moderate to major flooding on the Mississippi River has also been reduced significantly. However, it's important to remember that precipitation trends this spring will be key in determining how this flooding situation evolves. If we get into a wet pattern with heavy rains, uh, the flood risk could increase again. So there are many factors that go into the spring flood outlook and this table shows a breakdown of all the different things that we look at for considering spring flooding. The column on the left is the particular element that we look at and the column on the right is the impact on spring flooding this year. If the box is colored red that means there is an increased threat. Uh, green means that the threat has significantly diminished and the yellows mean that we're still seeing somewhat of a threat in those areas. So the two main threats this year uh, for the spring for the spring months are that rivers are running above normal for this time of year, the river levels. Also, there's high soil moisture, so the soils remain very wet. Any future precipitation will go directly into runoff. What's really uh, been uh, kind of the saving element this year as far as decreasing the flood threat has been below normal precipitation, and we'll we'll get into more details on that here shortly. Also, the snowpack liquid equivalent where there is snowpack in place, mainly across northern Minnesota and Wisconsin. Uh, we're still keeping an eye on that. Um, however, with much of the snowpack across the local area now melted, the threat is somewhat decreased. Uh, the rate of snow melt so far this year has been slow, and we'll take a look at that as well. Uh, frost step this year, there are is thawing in many areas, however there is still a few spots that have frost in the ground, especially north of Interstate 94. So the big question for the rest of the spring is uh, what will the spring precipitation trends be? So what has changed since the last outlook? The image on the left is the snowpack on the morning of February 26th. Now let's fast forward to the morning of March 11th and all the areas that you see in white are where there's no snowpack and then areas in grays, blues, uh, purples and pinks are where there's snowpack on the ground. So across the local area uh, much of the snow has melted and again most of the snowpack is now confined to northern Minnesota and northern Wisconsin into upper Michigan. Now let's take a look at stream flow conditions. The image on the left is the February average. Image on the right is average over the past seven days. And what you are looking at is the entire upper Mississippi River Basin drainage area. So each basin is colored according to the stream flow condition and whether it's uh, below normal, normal, or above normal, or in fact it could be much above normal or much below normal. The basins that you, that you see shaded in the blues and uh, darker blues and blacks are where stream flow conditions are above to much above normal. So many areas across the local area are experiencing above normal to much above normal stream flow conditions. That hasn't changed much at all. Soil moisture remains wet across the region. Uh, just a quick comparison of last year and this year. Uh, image on the left is last year, image on the right is this year. Any place you see the blue colors are where there is very high soil moisture and the darker blues are where soils are in uh, over the 95th to 98th percentile as far as uh, looking at uh, historical period. So some of the, the most wet uh, soil conditions uh, really ever uh, experienced compared to that period of time. So 
Last year, we just had a few spots that were very saturated, uh, especially across southern Wisconsin into northern Iowa. This year, it's much of the upper Midwest. So how much liquid is in the snow across northern Minnesota and northern Wisconsin? There is as much as six inches plus, um, even uh, greatly more than that in the lake effect areas. So we're watching uh, the snowpack conditions closely over the headwater areas of the Mississippi River, Wisconsin rivers, and the Black Rivers as the snow continues to melt. So how much has the flooding potential changed since the last outlook? Uh, these images show the probability for a greater than 50% chance of a particular flood category, and the boxes are colored uh, according to those flood categories and the 50% chance or greater potential. Any place you see that the purples are where there was a greater than 50% chance of major, uh, the reds were greater than 50% chance of moderate, and the oranges were a greater than 50% chance of minor flooding. The image on the left is the last spring flood outlook. Uh, you can see that there were many areas, especially along the Mississippi River, that had the potential for uh, major or uh, moderate flooding. And the same, uh, same goes for the tributary areas, except for there was mainly a signal there for minor to moderate flooding. Uh, fast forward to the latest spring flood outlook, and the threat has come down considerably. Uh, now, the greater than 50% chance uh, favors minor to a few spots approaching moderate flooding, and this is especially the case along the main stem of the Mississippi River. So how do you determine these flood probabilities, and uh, how can you look at, at what they are? Uh, you can go to the AHPS page, uh, that's the Advanced Hydrometeorological Prediction Service page, uh, click on a river gauge location, and near the top of the tab, uh, you can go to Long Range Outlooks and then Probability Information. And then you will find the chance of exceeding a level during a uh, time period. So if you click on those graphics, uh, you will see a, a chart that looks like this. And these are called exceedance graphics. And sometimes it can be a little confusing to interpret. Uh, what you're looking at here is the probability uh, to exceed a specific stage. So stage is on the left on the vertical axis. The probability of that stage is on the horizontal axis. Now two simulations are ran for uh, spring flood outlook. For the spring flood outlook, there's a historical simulation that looks at uh, past conditions in the climatology. And uh, there is a conditional simulation, which those simulations are ran with the current conditions. Now any time that black line, which is the conditional simulation, is above the blue line, which is the historical simulation, you, it is said to have an above normal flood, uh, flood potential. And by how, how far those two lines are apart, the higher that black line is above the blue line, uh, the higher the probability for flooding. So if we, just taking an example here, if we look at uh, what's the potential to reach the minor flood stage now at La Crosse, Mississippi River at La Crosse, come up here, look at your stage, minor flood stage is 12 feet, you come across where the conditional simulation um, starts to uh, intersect the 12 foot line, and that's right here, go down to your exceedance probability, and it's a little bit under 90%, so about an 88% chance of seeing a minor flood stage at La Crosse. And you can do the same uh, for the other flood categories or specific stages. So let's look at a comparison of how these probabilities have shifted. Uh, the image on the upper left is the February 27th outlook for the Mississippi River at La Crosse. Image on the lower right is the one that we just looked at. And you can see how those two lines have now become much closer together and the overall um, flooding threat has been reduced, especially uh, the probabilities for seeing uh, moderate or major flooding. So why this big change? What happened? Well, we've had an ideal melt. Uh, here's a, a, a plot of temperatures from uh, the La Crosse Airport, just kind of taking a midpoint of the local area. And I've highlighted the freezing line on the temperature graph here. And temperature is shown on the left, and the uh, date and time is shown on the horizontal axis, uh, so temperatures on the 
temperature temperatures on the vertical. So I've highlighted the freezing line here, and you can see we've had uh, many many uh, rises and falls here above and below freezing uh, day by day, and then finally really started to warm things up here um, into last weekend and uh, melted much of the snowpack across the local area. So that's what we consider an ideal melt. Uh, you have days where you warm up just above freezing, and then days where you uh, cool down and refreeze that snowpack. So it really slows the thaw process and runoff into area rivers. In addition to that, it's been very dry uh, across the local area over the last 30 days. Uh, much of the area uh, has only received 2 to 10% of the normal precipitation. That's especially the case in, across much of uh, western into southwest Minnesota. Uh, here in Wisconsin, closer to the I-90 corridor, we've only seen around 75 percent of the normal precipitation that we normally see over the last 30 days. So that certainly helped uh, the, the overall flooding threat um, seeing some drier weather. Now let's take a look at what we're expecting for temperature temperatures and precipitation here through the rest of the spring months. Uh, throughout the rest of March here, we are seeing signals in the long-term climate models for below normal temperatures, but it's just a very slight signal. Precipitation, uh, there's uh, a fairly strong signal for an above normal precipitation across the local area, so that is not good news for spring flooding potential. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Now let's look out even further for the entire period, March through May, uh, really overall potential for seeing above or below normal temperatures is uh, is really, we're really at the point where we have equal chances um, to see you know, either above, below, or near normal. So really no, no strong signal there. Uh, looking at precipitation, uh, there's just a real small signal for above normal precipitation. So again, not good news for spring flooding. Uh, but we'll have to keep an eye on that and see how that trend shakes out. The signal isn't all that strong, uh, breaking it down by percentages. Uh, the graphic on the left, uh, there's about a 37% chance of above normal precipitation with the other categories being below and near normal, 30% uh, chance of below normal, and 33% chance for near normal. So just a small signal for above normal precip uh, through the rest of the spring months. So takeaways from the spring hydrologic outlook is really an above normal potential for flooding, looking at those exceedance probabilities, doesn't necessarily equal uh, high flooding magnitude. So it's, it's important to not, uh, not think of it that way. Uh, this year's first and second spring flood outlooks indicated much above normal flooding potential. Uh, the probabilities were very high for minor flooding, uh, but less for moderate and major flooding. And uh, those probabilities have been reduced even further now that we've melted the snowpack, we've had an ideal melt so far, and we've seen below normal precipitation. So again, just overall conditions uh, during the spring snow melt uh, that really drives the spring uh, flooding potential and uh, how that threat evolves through the spring months. So just things to keep in mind which, uh, with uh, each uh, spring thaw. So uh, we urge you to monitor the latest forecasts and information from the National Weather Service. Uh, we continue to have wet grounds and elevated river levels, so we're not out of the woods yet for flooding potential. Here's some information for flood preparedness. Uh, you can check that out at weather.gov slash safety slash flood.